we're gonna have our very own Oktoberfest right here in our backyard and we've got to make something delicious to start. So today we're gonna to be making the most delicious soft pretzels and beer cheese ever. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen we're making soft pretzels which is so OG <laughs> here in Laura in the Kitchen and we're making beer cheese dip because it's that good. You can serve these with mustard and you have to have mustards. I like to do a couple different kinds of mustard, spicy mustard, honey mustard, but king of the dip for me is the beer cheese. But the first thing we're gonna work on is our pretzels. If you've been here and Laura in the kitchen long enough, then you remember back in 2011, I believe, the soft pretzel craze that uh, just about, I would say, spammed my entire account for weeks every single video i would upload there would be an influx of people spamming the comment section begging for a soft pretzel recipe to this day it's been over 10 years i have no idea why i don't know where that came from it wasn't a trending recipe i don't know but y'all killed me with that one soft pretzel soft pretzel so made the recipe created the recipe and it's been like our go-to soft pretzel pr recipe ever since and when you make them you can never buy pretzels again you just can't because the rest tastes like fish. Don't come at me, but they just do. I don't know why, but they do. So let's get started. In the bowl of the mixing, in the bowl here of my standing mixer, I've got all-purpose flour. To it, I'm going to add sugar, salt, and yeast. This is instant yeast. If you are using dry active yeast, you're going to have to activate that into the warm water mixture. I'm not doing that because I'm using um, instant. So add that right in. Give this a nice little mix around. And then in here, I've got some water, warm water, and some butter that's sort of almost melt, almost fully melted. You want that to be nice and warm. Add that right in. And all I'm gonna do is let this knead for a good four or five minutes on medium speed until a dough forms. I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Dough is ready slightly sticky still but we're gonna just knead it on a floured surface for just a few seconds to pull it together oh it's not wet like a batter it's just a little tacky which is exactly what I'm looking for put that out of the way excuse me for getting in your grill but that is perfect see that tiny little bit of dusting a flour just pull this whole thing together and it's now a bundle of soft perfection beautiful love it love it love it an oiled bowl is ready on standby make sure you oil both sides i'm gonna oil a little bit on the top because you don't want a, a crust to form on the top of the dough i hate when that happens and now I'm just going to cover this and place it somewhere warm to rise until about doubled in volume. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Dough is risen. There's a pot here with water. We'll talk about that in just a minute. I have a baking sheet here, baking pan that's been lined with some parchment paper. Deflate my dough, plonk it right on there. I don't know why I put the flour so far away. <laughs> I'm just going to knead it just for a second to pull it together. The texture of this dough is just absolute perfection. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this into, I'm not bringing a scale out. So there is a 100% chance that one pretzel will be much bigger than the other. They'll be the same thickness, which is fine. I'm gonna cut this into eight equal pieces. Um, if you wanna make this smaller, cut it into 12, but eight equal pieces will give me a good size pretzel. So I just cut each one in half, and then you have to cut four out of each half, like that. And now it's really important to put these on a very lightly floured surface, and you need to let these rest. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cover these with the bowl, I'll show you in just a second. These just have to relax a little, like so, like that. And I'm just gonna leave them there for 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna 
clean my desk here because you don't actually want a very floury surface, but that's good enough. And then we proceed. Then 10 minutes. I keep them covered in between each one. Put a little tiny, tiny bit of flour, just a tiniest bit of flour on your baking sheet. Take each piece of dough. You want to roll it out to about between a 12 and 14 inches long, maybe even a little bit longer if the pieces are really thick. Perfect. Then you're going to take, you're going to have to watch closely, okay? You turn and you pinch. Does that make sense? The first one's kind of like a pancake, right? It always comes out a bit wonky, but the more you do them, the better you'll get at it. So just into your long rope. The longer you make the rope, the bigger and the more distinctive of a pretzel you're gonna get, right? See? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Don't mind me. We're talking pretzels. We're talking carbs. We're talking bread. We're talking all the things I love. Now this recipe, I have to say, it's special to me because every year for like a decade, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law have always had an Oktoberfest party. And it was always such a highlight of the year. We saw a lot of family and friends that we don't typically see throughout the year. They've been doing it for, like I said, about a decade. Obviously the last couple of years have been challenging, so they haven't done it. And we've missed it, we've missed it. So I figured, you know what? I'm gonna have some friends over tonight. We're gonna make pretzels. We're gonna love them. And we're just gonna reminisce on some really good times that we've had at their Oktoberfest party. And if that doesn't sound like a good time, well, you know what? I really don't know what does. Just saying. I'm gonna to continue to roll these out. You can see it just takes not very long at all because I don't have patience. Now I wanna eat, I wanna eat. Dale. Pretzels are formed. You're gonna go ahead and add your baking soda to the boiling water. The baking soda is extremely crucial, so do not leave it out. Now you're gonna take your pretzels one at a time and just drop them into the boiling water. And I do about, I do about three at a time. I have another baking sheet right there waiting. And we're gonna keep them in here. Let me get my phone because timer is everything. I'm gonna keep them in here for about 45 seconds. Come on, here we go. I'll keep them in here about 45 seconds. I have another baking sheet here ready with some parchment paper. I'm gonna show you what I do. Um, if you wanna flip them over halfway, do. I just kinda take the boiling water and kind of coat the tops of them. I find that that just does the job really, really well. You can make like six to four, four to six really big ones, which would be awesome, but let's face it, everyone's gonna take one. And these are big enough as is. So I don't wanna make them too, too big, otherwise they'll be just a little bit too heavy. We're about 40 seconds. I'm gonna show you what I do, because this is kind of important. Okay. You take it out, and I kinda just tap the bottom of my spoon onto a mopine just to absorb any excess water. And I'm just gonna do the rest of my pencils. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm brushing each one, the whole surface inside with some egg wash, just one egg beaten with like literally a tablespoon of water just to make it go a little further, but you don't even have to do that. If you didn't want to, just beat up one egg and you'll be fine. Beautiful, and now you need to top them with salt. Traditionally, you should use pretzel salt. I'm not gonna buy something uh, for one thing, so I just use my coarse kosher salt. It works perfectly fine. It's perfect every time, and I already have it. Plus, it's like I said, it's coarse, so it's not super fine, and you'll see the salt on the top once it's baked. Perfect, I've got my oven preheated to 450. These are gonna go in there. I put them on the top rack 
They're gonna go in there about 15 minutes or so. I'll show you what they look like when they're done. And then once they come out and they cool and set a little bit, we'll make the beer cheese dip, which is super, super quick, but it is incredible. So I'm gonna pop these in and then we'll proceed to making the finish touch to our own Oktoberfest in our own backyard. Pretzels came out, they look phenomenal. I mean, look at this. Look at that. And they're just bouncy, and I know they're gonna be chewy and gorgeous and delicious. You can make these in whatever shape you want. You can make these little pretzel nuggets. You can make whatever. You can wrap them around a hot dog and call them a pretzel dog, okay? You can do whatever your heart desires, but I like a nice, mm. Like that to me is like the perfect one right there. It's super, super thick in the center. My favorite. Okay, to make the dip, we're gonna first melt some butter in a saucepan. If you're using a nonstick saucepan like I am, make sure you use like a silicone spatula so that nothing scrapes your pan. Then you're gonna need, while well, that melts, you'll need some flour. I'm using a combination of three cheeses because I think the flavor combination of all of them together is dynamite. I'm using sharp yellow cheddar. I'm using Swiss and I'm using Mott's. And the reason I'm using those three is for flavor and texture. Mozzarella just gives you a really lovely cheesy pull creaminess. And then the other two obviously have stronger flavor. You'll need milk. You need some whole grain Dijon mustard. You'll need your beer of choice. I'm using a Yingling. Um, any light lager is great, like a medium lager. Nothing too dark, nothing like a stout or anything because it would be a little bit too bitter. And then you're gonna just need some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, salt and pepper. That is it. I don't go crazy with seasonings because I really want to taste the beer. I really want the creaminess of the cheese and I want to taste the flavor of the pretzel. The pretzel is a main component here. It's not just for show, <laughs> you know? Add your flour to the butter. You're creating a roux. This is gonna be the thickener. And you're gonna cook this for like a minute. Looks good. Get your beer out. We're gonna add about a cup of beer, which is roughly about half the bottle. Whisk that in. I'd like for that to come to a boil. It already smells good, and you already know that it's gonna be good, right? From the flavor, like the smell of the beer. Oh, you just know it. And then you're gonna add your milk. Whisk of roux. Turning this down just a little bit, I don't wanna scorch anything and you're just going to go ahead and cook this while constantly whisking until it starts to thicken. Once it starts to thicken then we'll add pretty much everything else. It comes together super fast. It's great to make last minute but it's also great if you do it a little earlier on and to reheat it. Just go ahead and reheat it and add a little bit more milk just to make it runny again and then you're good to go. This is thickening up really nicely. Let that go and bubble. I'm going to add some of the mustard, a few dashes of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you call it. And then we're gonna add a good pinch of salt and some black pepper. I really like a coarsely ground black pepper, but you do you. Whisk that together. And that already smells fantastic. And now with the heat on low, I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk in my trio of cheeses. I do it slowly, just so that it, I don't get like a big giant clump, and then it makes it difficult to like mix it in, if you will. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add all in, and then once it's, everything's melted and bubbled for like a minute, and then we serve, and that's it. Everything is melted. Give it a taste, it is perfection. Add it to your little crock. And I mean, mm, can you even stand it? I'm gonna go in for this big guy right there. Look at that. Oh, baby. Ah, tell you what, if this is not what dreams are made of. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. I mean, opposite end. The beer cheese dip is exactly what you think of. You taste the beer, 
You can taste the, the creaminess of the cheese. It's just phenomenal. The pretzels are to die for. To die for is the only word. Go to lauraandthekitchen.com. You have to experience it for yourself. I hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. There are no words.